Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad uh, once again with another mission that we're going to slingshot from Jupiter. Uh, this is the uh, Wanderer Alpha, and it is going to Saturn to uh, perform some flybys of some of Saturn's inner moons, hopefully. And you'll notice that we have uh, a slightly different launch vehicle today. Hey, look at that. Isn't that neat? Yeah, we've got a single RS-25 on a, uh, what was, a uh, DN-1. Uh, this would have been a DN-1A, but we have uh, updated the upper stage. Let me just make sure I'm not lying to you with that. Yes, that is a single HG-3 up there. So this is the first DN-1 series to fly with a B upper stage. It's a DN-1B RS-25. So, um, our inclination with the moon is way off, but I don't want to wait another day to get this off the pad because uh, time is of the essence. Our Jupiter window is uh, fast passing us by. So we're going to go ahead and get this little guy uh, rolling. So, without any further ado, we'll get our ignition sequence rolling. Now the RS-25 does take a little bit longer to spool up. And get those launch clamps off. You can see it's struggling off the pad a little bit. That thing should be coming into full bore very shortly. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to fly this on up to orbit very, very quick off the launch pad, this one. Uh, let me just uh, check my uh, positioning here. Uh, I should have done this before I pressed the space bar, but it looks to me like uh, we need to steer north just a little bit. So, anyway, um, oh, we're only at 60 some odd meters per second. Fantastic. All right. So uh, I'm going to... Oh, man, that's interesting using the roll program. I'm going to fly this on up to orbit, and uh, I will probably voice over talking a little bit more about the uh, our launch stack, although there's really not a whole lot to report other than the changes that we've already talked about. But I will see all of you uh, in orbit. Yeah, the basics of it are is replace two uh, HG3s with a single RS-25 DE. It made some slight changes to the tank, uh, basically just for the engine mounting and a little bit more fuel accommodation. The interesting thing with this launch was that for some reason I had no um, yaw, or not yaw, but uh, pitch authority. Uh, it was... no, that would be yaw authority, the A and D keys. Uh, that I usually use to uh, do my gravity turn. Instead, I was having to uh, roll and uh, use my pitch control to uh, steer, which uh, caused a great bit of difficulty. There's booster set. They are cleaning it away, and now we are down to our single RS-25 DE. Um, that control irregularity seemed to correct itself once the boosters got about uh, three-fourths of the way through their fuel. So uh, it's something to look into. I think it has to do with uh, that I locked some of the gimbals on the uh, E1 Advanced booster engines. Um, and considering that we only have a single engine on our core stage now, those probably need to be unlocked uh, just for better control authority, as we can clearly see. Uh, anyway, uh, I obviously should have lobbed this a little bit higher. We're actually uh, at booster step. We have a lower thrust to weight ratio with uh, our single RS-25 than we do with our twin uh, HG-3s. Um, this does come in providing, uh, yeah, about uh, 400 uh, kilonewtons of thrust less than those two engines combined, but with the uh, greater efficiency, uh, I think overall it's a better choice for an engine, and it does save us some money going with a singular engine instead of the pair. So uh, I do expect to continue using the RS-25, and this configuration will probably replace all DN1A, DN1B, DN2A, and DN2B. Um, We'll probably move up to a twin RS-25 variant for anything heavier than that. And of course, uh, I'm still working on adequate replacements for the DN-5, but I think uh, I have something that is of comparable per, uh, performance. Um, not really the huge gains that I'm really hoping for, but uh, those are going to require an upgrade to the VAB to give us the room that we are required to uh, work for. So be patient. The really big launch vehicles will come very soon. 
Um, it looks like we're finally uh, rounding out towards our uh, apogee, so we should be coming up on stage set. There it is, and we have a good light on our single HG3 uh, vacuum. And so we should just be rounding out our orbit here real soon. I will turn you back over to old me. All right, and there's shut down at uh, 222 by 189 kilometer. Uh, I'm happy with that. We've still got uh, 6,200 meters per second left here in our um, S4B stage, although this is a, a smaller version. All right, and we can probably toggle the RCS to off for right now so it stops screwing things around. And let's get our transfer plotted. Oh, you can go away, rendezvous planner. We don't particularly need you anymore. And Jupiter set as target, so we'll uh, bring up Mech Jeb. And what do we want? Uh, maneuver Planner. There we go. Mech Jeb, you can go away. And Contracts, you can go away. Do, do, do. Pork Chop Selection. Let's uh, switch this over and let it compute. Leap. We'll go back to Pork Chop. There we go. How about ASAP? Anytime now. 6.8 kilometers per second, create node. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that actually looks like it's going to slingshot us out in the right direction based on uh, all these other nodes that I've been plotting. That's fantastic. Uh, so we will use uh, just a couple hundred meters per second from our transfer stage, and that burns in 46 minutes. There's some interesting Borg cube. All right, uh, so let's just uh, go ahead and start time warping. I need to see some things. Earth is just too bright to let me read my number readout, and that's fine. How is our power consumption doing? Yeah, we uh, we are draining. That's to be expected. The uh, core on this uh, hydrolock stage uh, consumes a lot of power. So, not surprised by that. The sooner we can ditch it, I think the uh, happier we will all be. Uh, as you can see, I did change the paint. Oh, uh, I'm going to screw this all up talking about uh, aesthetics. <laughs> That's nothing new. Oh, and it's so slow to turn around. This is saying we're going to displace that in two minutes. And this thing's burn time is in, takes five minutes. Well, I guess we need to account for our uh, toggling of stages here. I'm just going to go ahead and move this down to there. That should be fine, right? Okay, it looks like all of our antennas are booted. I did target Earth. I probably covered that already. No big deal. Oh, we are going to aim uh, quite a bit below horizon. That's fine. No big deal. I just need to remember to uh, unlock the fuel tank on the transfer stage, and hopefully all of this will go quite well. And we're going to use the time warp bug to uh, kind of lock us into this. All right, node is in five minutes. Ah... Uh, don't know how early I want to start this burn. You know what? We're going to take it to about the four minute mark. How about that? Yeah, you know, right about there. That seems good. All right, let's start to ullogen this HG3. We only have one ignition remaining on it, so we need to nail this. There's zero room for error. Risky, stable, very stable. We'll just give it a couple more seconds and ignition. Yes, we have good light of the HG3. And uh, we are off on our way to Saturn by way of Jupiter. So I'm just going to hold down the H key and help uh, squeeze a couple extra free meters per second out of this tank by, uh, well, one, the thrust provided by the RCS thrusters, and two, the lessened weight from having ditched all that fuel that uh, has an absolutely terrible ISP. Although I think even if I held the key down the entire weight of this burn, we still would not uh, use up all the fuel by the time this tank is empty. Um, as you can tell just by kind of the scale of the stage, this is uh, quite a bit smaller than our standard uh, B upper stage, but uh, since it is using the HG3 engine, it still gets the designation. I'm weird like that, and I should probably think up a uh, better schema for doing these things. So uh, anyway, we're going to round out this burn. I'll pick you guys up in just a few minutes. Like, uh, hopefully three of them. 
Well, I mean, it'll be three minutes for me. You guys get to enjoy this, like, speddy uppy bit, which uh, will hopefully take a lot less than three minutes um, and stuff. Anyway, this uh, this upper stage is basically the almost the same size as the A upper stage, which had the four RL10s. We've just swapped those out for a single HG3 and stretched the tank just a little bit, but its total runtime is relatively short for what we usually see on these HG3 vacuum upper stages. And there it's burned out, so now we will switch over to our transfer stage, a single AJ-10 Advanced, which is uh, pretty standard. Uh, it's basically just a huge fuel slug with uh, some RTGs to power its uh, computer core, chosen because it was lighter than the Agena core. Just the Agena core has that huge battery and can shut down, but when we're dealing with RTGs, we can kind of mitigate that. Anyway, so this burn took a little longer than I expected, which is only a problem when it's going to come time to uh, correct for our slingshot maneuver, but uh, I think we've got more than enough Delta V to deal with it. So, back to old me. Alright, well, we are within uh, 0.4 meters per second. Uh, not the greatest, but we're going to have to wait until we get outside of Earth's SOI to get a uh, better picture of what that's actually going to look like. Good news is we are not going to hit the moon. That that's good. And here's our most recent fleet of things that uh, we have launched. Oh wow, huh? That's uh, from our Mars lander. I guess that's uh, making its uh, probably its third or fourth lap at this point. And there's our missions to mission singular to Pluto in its transfer stage. Also en route to Jupiter for a slingshot maneuver. And so far it looks. Uh, we're looking pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to get to doing uh, other orbital corrections with this uh, in the future. I'll just add them as some speddy uppy bits in the upcoming episode, but I think that is uh, going to do it for today, everybody. Let's just uh, zoom out and see if we can't get a good screeny. Not zoom out, but, you know, like time warp or something. That's not too bad, really, although that was uh, the last one of these missions. So maybe we'll just uh, let it hang for a couple more minutes. There we go. That's that is quite nice. I'll take it. Brilliant, awesome. So uh, thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. We'll have uh, more on uh, Wanderer's mission to explore Saturn's uh, inner moons in upcoming episodes. But uh, until then, thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you later. <laughs>